I usually just do here. here pinch a little bit. Give you and you do your side. Let the table just back a little bit. This is just epinephrine and lidocaine, but very dilute light epi. Any discomfort? Good. Just pressure, though, right? So we're injecting just uh, some solution to numb the skin and also to cause the blood vessels to constrict. So our, when, we, when we remove the fat with the mesenchymal stem cells, we're going to have very little blood in that, which is what we want. So this is basically a liposuction procedure in, in small volume, right? And you're going to have a flatter tummy too. That's the fringe benefit of this. These are nice little candy to use, right? Very nice. And the suction candies look really good, too. We'll need a clamp, so we'll clamp that way. I didn't inject real deep here, so you may want to come a little bit deeper in here. OK, you want to clamp for me? The second step will be to remove. Now then we're going to remove it next. But we want you comfortable. Sure. Please. Okay. I don't believe that there's a weakness. Mm-hmm. Take out. Oh. There we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we're removing the fat. Any pain, Vic? Any pain, uh, William? Good. I feel that you are removing something. But just pressure, right? You are doing light position now. Good. Manual light position. Right? Yeah. With a syringe? With a syringe, yeah. Is it pink? No, it's yellow. You got a really nice fat one. I know, I'm so proud oh, of I know. my fat. You know, I can see on this fat, I can see French. I, I think that we need to take more. I see canola. Ça, c'est les crocs, messieurs, les bonbons français. Si. Madeleines, Madeleines, Gagnoli. Et les churros. I can see all of this here. Very good fat. It's coming out very nicely. It's a good quality file. Very good quality. Can I sell the, the remote? <laughs> the one no, we need all of it. To resell it. I'll give you 120. <laughs> you're going to end up with how much <laughs> fat? 120 <laughs> of this, how much fat you're going to have? <laughs> Are we doing pain wise? I'm going right below the skin here, please. I'm fine tuning the cosmetic component here so you have a nice flat tummy here. But then the problem with that is you want to come back and do the rest. Pinch or no? That's good, right? Let's take take out some of the... How much is the syringe? 
60 cc is a, not a lot of, uh, you know. And it's really nice fat. It's not bloody. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yes. I never say that to my wife. You know what? I have beautiful fat. You're very proud of me. Tell her this man in Costa Rica was admiring your fat. They all come to admire the fat. They didn't shoot. <laughs> Can't or take a little bit more. Give it a little second. Good fat, William. So, William, just so you know, what's taking us a little extra time with the sewing is we always put our initials on the bottom right-hand side. So. You're putting your initials? Yes. VG for Van Gogh. And oh, VU. You some stitches, not, not uh, only. We're putting a couple little stitches. And you have surgical screens on both sides. So we're going to mm -hmm. re reduce the fat. And the only thing we're doing is cleansing, rinsing, resizing, and reshaping. Now it's going to come out here. As soon as it's full, I'm going to jiggle it around to let the air bubbles go through. Mm -hmm. See how they go through? Mm -hmm. Less to deal with at the end. Okay, close both. Bottom. Ball bearing, yeah. Good. Metal ball. Now we're going to turn it over and see we just have a little bit of air. Mm -hmm. Right? Not much. I'm going to pop it back to the top. I'm going to open both. See the air just left? Yeah. Done. That's it. We don't it. even need to put okay. Now we turn Maybe. it over. Mm -hmm. Right? And now you put your... Finder. Yep. I'm going to open the bottom. Push okay. the fat in. No more space. See, now it's coming out. Let me see. Yep, so pop that out. Okay. We'll do the next one. And then it's still the top. Yeah. So it just, it just got reshaped. It went through a filter to be resized. And then it's going to step down one more time. Okay. So at the end, the optimum cluster size is in the range of 500 to 800 microns and will be 5 to 7. 5 to 7. 100 microns. So we're rinsing, cleansing, and resizing the adipose tissue. And with the ball bearings, we're going to fragment it. With the ball? Yeah. With the that both activates pericytes, mm -hmm. as well as disrupts the extracellular matrix. Because the microfat is a heterogeneous mix of cellular elements, as well as secretomes. Careful. Segments of DNA, RNA. Yeah. That went through nice there. Okay, one more. Yeah. 
nice and clean, right? Beautiful That's how fat. You, take the fat. So you, you can, can even see it separating in layers yeah. already. Yeah. Oh, okay, can you give us an 18 gauge needle? You don't go like this. Rich, you don't go up back and forth. You just it's gentle like that. Huh? I don't want to be too traumatic. I just want to break it up because we're going to resize it the second time. Okay. So now we're going to open both. And then you want me to open this? Yeah. Yeah, but it's, you're going to run yeah. out of sail. That's okay. That's okay because I have a little so bit. So now left. we're going to rinse it. It's going to go through. Okay. You want me to open this, right? Yes. Okay. And now we're going to rinse down to the collection bag. Mm -hmm. Ready? Well, not rinse much. Oh, oh he's going to change the bag. Yeah, there's a little saline. I don't want to spill all over. See how it's starting to get clear? Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Yeah, I don't really see any fat coming out of here, which is good. Well, but the bag's filling. Mm -hmm. See how this is clear now? Yep. So we're good. Don't over tighten so we don't break it. So now it's nice and clear. Mm -hmm. There's no blood residue. I'm going to put this syringe on the bottom. The other way. Open. Mm -hmm. Draw out 10 cc's. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the air. So leave it for a minute. Just take it off and get rid of the air. Just, you know, to okay. put this on here. Mm -hmm. Push up. Pull up. Nice. And that's one. Repeat. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put those over there. Yeah, so this will go in that sterile tray. Mm -hmm. And that's ready to treat, okay? Mm -hmm. Push. Good. Fine. Good. All right. Yep. Very nice. Ready? So we have 40 cc's here. Good. Okay. okay. So now we're going to begin. So the first joint is the tibial tailor yes. joint. Mm -hmm. Just hit the freeze button. So when we inject the anesthetic, we do it superficial, not in the joint. Okay, ready? So the first structure here is the tibio-tailor joint. That's local. Yeah, that's a big needle. It's very, very thin. Okay. So let me give him a little, I'm going to give you a little local. 26. Can I see, let me see where your finger is. Good, that's it. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go right in. 45 angle. degrees, straight down. Yep. Here's your target. Hold on. Go ahead. Pinch. Straight down. Go ahead. There you are. Inject. One cc. Just Two. Can you see that, William? Okay. Hold on. Two. Two One goes more? there. Flat. No. It's no, flowing no. throughout. So we're going to cover everything. <clears throat> but with ultrasound, not only are you precise, yeah. but you have visual confirmation okay. that you covered your I'm intended going again, target. Ready? Go ahead. Perfect. 
More? Keep going, the whole thing. Push down, oh, further. Surprise. Good, get deep into the Done. joint. Okay, good. Perfect. Out. Okay. Next. I'm gonna come out. Yep. Or shall I stay here? See that little V right there in the center? Mm hmm You're gonna go right under the line of the probe. You're cut up to come out. Yeah. Right under the line of the probe. So right down in your mark, right? See it? Hold on. And then straight in, like against 45 the 45 or, or straight yep. in? Yep, and straight down. Yep. Sorry, William. Inject. I'm right, right on. I'm right on. Good. I can't go any, any deeper. Ready? Yep. Good. Straight See? Up. Yeah. Okay. Out. More? Nope. You, Done. Tiny bit left. That's it. Okay. Little light out on the next one. Okay. Just to numb them up. Light thing. Okay. 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 Just a minute. Straight in. These are one cc's, right? right? One cc's. Okay, straight in. Yep. You ready? Yep. Bounce a little. Okay. No, that's where I am. And we'll watch the inject tape. Okay, come out. And go. And you have to go distal, the, the needle distal. Pinch. Go ahead. Now inject. OK, now you got it. Go. Right there. I say it, right? Yep. You're going to cover it. OK. Out. Done. I'm going to go in 40, 45 bone, degrees. Right, go under the probe, which is when you'll see your bevel. There it is. Wow. Go ahead, inject. One there. Full CC. Out. Out. Look right at on it. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So now one of the things to understand is that when you get laxity in a joint, yep. a ligament is a static stabilizer like a wire. So when it stretches, it does not recoil. Right, right. When you inject the ends of that ligament with cellular therapy, it contracts like you hit the end of an earthworm. Mm. It pulls back. So not only are you treating the microenvironment, you're also tightening, tightening up the, the joint itself. Sorry, William. That's kind of close to the one. Sit. Okay, inject. Right there, right? Yep, it's surrounding the sheath. You see it flow? Yep. Yep. The, the beauty of watching injectate <clears throat> flow is like art. <laughs> right? Okay, done there. Yep, and now we're going to go one deeper. See here? Mm hmm. Go ahead, down. Good, go ahead. All the way in, right there. Okay. Look at that, all right? Is that like yep. where we want Perfect. to be? There you are. Perfect, perfect. Out. Done. The whole, that whole leg's done. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. Alcohol sponge. See, I'm also giving you the energy of quantum energy from my hands to heal. We're just warming up the cells here. It's still frozen? Partially. We just took it out of minus 80 two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Teeny little bit more and that's it. The DEXA? This, this is the DEXA's yeah, in, okay. DEXA's in, and then so this is You put it in already? Yeah, yeah, put it in okay. when we started. Okay. How many million inside? 50. Yep. 
Okay, we're running. Okay. Bend your leg if you want. I can do that. No yeah, problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. And we're monitoring, everything's going great. You feeling burning? Any burning? Hi, Jeff and Kathy. Welcome to Lively Costa Rica. It's so good to have you guys here. Thank you. Thank you. So you've just come from the United States here in Costa Rica. What are you guys here for? Well, I'm here because of this wonderful man, but I'm here to get stem cells. And I'm here uh, just because I have heard so much about the medical spa here and um, I've turned 67 now I'm gonna be wow. 68 this year and it's it's the year that I actually a few years ago you started noticing things in my body that were changing from the elasticity in my skin to some issues with lungs and um, and the fact that I have heart disease in my family so oh, wow. I'm, I'm actually here to get stem cells very good and Jeff so I'm really familiar with stem cells. I'm the producer of this series, and I've actually had stem cells before. I had a terrible shoulder problem that, like for years, I think anybody at my age that lifted weights has a shoulder problem, got stem cells in my shoulder, and it took maybe two or three months before I really could tell the difference, and now it's been almost two years, and I don't, it's just, I don't even remember what it felt like to have a shoulder problem. Wow. But there are other stem cell ways to use them that aren't yet legal in the United States. And, and in order to do them legally, you've got to go somewhere outside of the United States, which is a little iffy. You know, you don't, don't know where to go. And so because I know Dr. Jim Papa and not because I know his reputation, what he does and know him, this was, you know, the perfect place to come and do intravenous stem cells. Yeah. And I'm doing that because I'm old. <laughs> okay, so you say you're old, but tell us a little bit more about yourself. So I, I turned 61 yesterday. You're a baby. <laughs> and, and so, you know, just like I don't have anything that I'm losing, but I notice wounds take longer to heal. Mm. The other day mm -hmm. I, I um, on my marble, countertop I scraped my hand and I looked down and it was bleeding I'm like yeah. wait a minute I'm getting old man skin oh, where no. you know you see old guys you know they're <laughs> they're you know their skin rips yeah. easy but I've noticed it takes longer to heal yeah and this so I, I'm really after longevity and and a long health span not in a crazy way but I, I have a dozen grandkids and I consider my work important but the reality is my I could be replaced. If I didn't do what I did in in the world, someone would probably fill it in. But for these dozen grandkids, there's nobody else that can fill in and play the role in their yeah. lives that I want to. So I've really shifted my health goals from being fitness to, to now my health goals are to really live a healthy, robust, another 61 years yeah and quality of life is so important you know how we spend our time but how can we enjoy a great quality of life if we're not well so yeah. um kathy i'd love to hear a little bit more about your background i know you've devoted your life to health and wellness you've got a very interesting uh, history so why don't you share with us a little bit more about yourself well, I've been in the uh, fitness business for about 40 some years now. I did my first product in 1978, which was an exercise album. And uh, that led to DVDs and videos and then, uh, you know, downloadables, podcasts, New York Times bestselling books. But really, um, I've devoted my life to actually figuring out how to help people live longer, healthier lives. And you know, to the point we were just talking about, this idea of health span and health span as far as how can you be, how can you be living your fullest life possible at 70, 80, 90. So I mentioned that I, you know, turned 67. I have a daughter, I have two daughters, but one of them went to the Olympics uh, two years ago. Wow. And she's gonna be going to the Olympics, hopefully uh, in 2020 in Japan. And one of the things that I've noticed is that I waited 
lo a longer time to have my children. So I had one when I was 36 and one when I was 40. So I really want to be around for my grandkids and I want to be able to be vital and take them to the park and roll around with them and, and ski and do all the things that I love to do and teach them the things I know. And I realize with my daughters right now that the, the grandkids aren't coming for another, hopefully, Kate and Perry, hopefully they're coming in, you know, maybe in the next five years, but still that means that I want to be 80, 90 years old and still doing the things that I love to do. So that's one of the reasons why I'm here. And as, and, and as far as, you know, my career, I've always just been interested. It's this curiosity of how do we keep ourselves energetic, our brains functioning well, our bodies functioning well, our hearts functioning well. And 40 years ago, it was exercise. It was this brand new thing. Exercise helps you stay younger. Now we're learning what type of exercise helps you stay younger, what type of nutrition helps you stay younger. And then there's this whole new world of stem cells and what is possible. And even though it seems like like it, it's so far away being able to do this stuff, it's here right now. And the fact that I get to go through the process today is unbelievable. It's like a dream come true. Yeah, well, your your history is absolutely amazing. And it sounds like you're really prepared for what you're gonna experience today. Jeff, did you wanna to add to that? No, I'm just really delighted. I, I Because we've done so many interviews, I know a lot about cellular therapy. And this this is one I'm excited to do. You know, I, I don't have any specific health problems, mm -hmm. and I want that to be true 10 years from now, yeah. 20 years from now. And so this is a brilliant opportunity. And then Costa Rica, you know, it, 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 incredible, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. And and really, this this goes in line with my philosophy that the environment that we live in yeah. has a tremendous effect on our health. And so I even think, you know, I'm what a beautiful place to be where you can almost feel the vibration of, of this place doesn't feel like going to a clinic in a big city and that detached from the earth environment so it's kind of a cool place to come to the that. people I mean this is what I've really noticed in Costa Rica it's not just the weather and that vibration you talk about but it's coming from the people everybody you run into here has you know a smile yeah. uh, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of um, gratitude that you feel all around and so it's very special to be here it is. It's a really special place. This is my first time to Costa Rica. It's obviously great to host you guys here too. But um, all those things I think come into play when you're talking about lifestyle, the environment, the foods that people are eating. And you look at the studies of this being one of the blue zones in the world. So what a better place to come if you're looking for that healing or you're looking to take your body and your, um, your anti-aging to the next level. So what's your expectation for today's treatment? Well, honestly, I'm going and hoping that some of the issues that we've talked about already, but that uh, I've heard that that it might uh, that stem cells might help improve, will I'll see a shift in it. And one of the things I'm thinking about is lungs. I happen to have uh, my dad was a smoker. I um, at a very young age got hit with a lot of trauma, which I tend to hold in my chest and my lungs. I've been diagnosed with exercise-induced asthma, which for an exercise person is not probably the best thing to have. And I've noticed that I have very reactive lungs, and I'm I'm hoping that this this treatment will help tap into my lungs a bit. The, the second thing, and this is really high, high on my list, my dad died of a heart attack when I was uh, 17 years old, and he was 42. My grandfather died of a heart attack. My sister two years ago died of a heart attack. So we have heart disease in the family. And I'm really hoping that somehow uh, the, the genetic marker that I have, and we've already know that I have for heart disease, that, that we can, it will tap into that. And then the last thing, I, and, and there's many more, but to just kind of get to, you know, it's the vanity side of it. It's like, what can, what can I be doing to help improve energy? And even though I'm very energetic, I know the things like recovery after exercise takes longer, so I'm looking at that. And then just the little things like, skin and this elasticity that we were mentioning that where you grab your skin and then you release it and it's like oh my god it's not releasing it's still it's still all crepey and everything so that crepey type skin things like that that maybe there's a little bit of a, a shift there all right and i'm really easy to please i'm just expecting to be six to eight inches taller 
uh, my belly go away. Um, <laughs> You know, e easy stuff like that. I stuff. can do that for you, Jeff. The, uh, <laughs> we so, might need to manage your expectations yeah, might, a little better. And maybe I'm <laughs> not quite realistic. So, and, and actually, I'm not looking for a specific more. I really do believe in our body's innate ability to heal itself. But that means that it has the ingredients that it needs to heal itself and that we're not constantly poisoning it. And so one of the things I'm gonna do is just continue to decrease the amount of toxins that I put in my body, but I also wanna give it the, the raw tools. And I, for me, uh, it, my belief system is these stem cells are such an advance in giving my own body things to work with. Um, so maybe I'm avoiding some health problems and I want to continue to do that. All right, well, if you guys are ready, let's go get started. Let's do this thing. I'm ready. I'm excited. Wow. So, Irina, thank you for taking the time to uh, sit and have a conversation with us. Thank you. So, we are talking about, uh, in this particular segment, cell therapy, and, and I've been interviewing a lot of patients around it who have been experiencing all kinds of pain and that they seem to be getting relief. You're unique. Uh, you had run for office, so can you talk about your political background a little bit? Yes. In uh, 2016, I ran for a city council in Tempe. Mm -hmm. And then last election in 2018, I ran for U.S. Congress in District 9 in Arizona. Unfortunately, I did not make it through the primary. Mm -hmm. But one of my number one platforms in my campaign mm -hmm was looking at changing the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. We're having a problem with opioids, mm -hmm. but we're not really working the healthcare system to really solve this problem. Looking for new drugs, mm -hmm. just making people go cold turkey, uh, you know, and counting the amount of drugs is sort of masking the problem, mm -hmm. but not getting to the real crux of the matter mm. and coming to the solution. And unfortunately, I had to go through a problem with pain myself mm. to really understand that. So what was your own personal journey? I was injured mm. twice um, by, uh, once was a vehicle mm. accident and once was run over. I was run over in 98, head to toe by a Jeep. Wow. So in and out of the wheelchair, I mean, you can talk about pain. And uh, so not only was I the, I think, the oldest candidate, but I think I was the only candidate who was considered, uh, which a lot of people don't realize, um, as disabled. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a disabled plate. And my husband's like, I don't talk about that. But I really think that we need to talk about pain in this country, mm -hmm. that anybody can wind up in a car accident, mm -hmm. anybody can be at pain at any age. You can be a baby mm -hmm. or whatever. Pumping people full of drugs is not the answer. What kind of pain were you experiencing? <sighs> My knees went. Mm -hmm. I also had a shoulder that was dislocated wow. and totally shattered mm. and several surgeries on that mm. but when you can't walk that's the worst mm. and even coming out of the wheelchair the knees went mm. and it came to a point every six months I was getting cortisone shots mm. then it went to three and then the last point all of a sudden the shots I had the knees swelled up. I was at an event, mm -hmm. and my knees got so puffy, I could, could hardly walk, and I was in such immense pain. Mm. And my doctor said, well, we'll take uh, the codosome back out of the knees. Mm. They had to go back in and pull out, wow. uh, you know, and pull, pull out fluid. And it was saying, well... I think at this point we should start looking at replacing both knees. Mm. And I'm like, okay, what does that curtail? Mm. Well, you're going to go, we'll put replacement parts first in one knee, and you'll go through surgery, that means painkillers, and then we're, you're going to have physical therapy. So three months downtime. Then yeah. we'll do the other knee. Wow. And that will be an additional three months. Mm. 
And I said, well, how long does that last? Well, oh, you should be good for at least maybe eight to 10 years. Well, why eight to 10 years? Mm -hmm. Well, then we have to do it all over again. So that's more downtime, mm -hmm. more everything. And you're looking at ba basically, this would cost Medicare maybe around $70,000 a pop mm. per knee. Wow, $140,000 yeah. for both. And every, it's only good for eight to 10 every years. Every decade. Wow. If you're good for a decade. Right. If you, you know, I'm thin, mm -hmm. but if you, if I weighed more, you're looking at for every, I think every five pounds you're overweight, mm -hmm. it's 15 pounds of stress additional Wow. on your knees. Mm. So you're wearing out your joints mm. quicker. Yeah. And you know, this is a disaster. This is not the way to treat. I mean, forgive me for saying this, but this is medieval, yeah. medieval medicine that we're doing in the year 2019, we're still doing, bi and this is barbaric, mm -hmm. medieval medicine, you know, pumping with drugs, but the drug companies are making money, mm -hmm. or we've got new alternatives. Guess mm -hmm. what those are? New drugs. Mm -hmm. And st I found stem cells. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband's like, okay, we're signing up. And my husband insisted not just to inject the knees. He said, you know what? You've got so many things going on in your body. I want her to have the full enchilada. Mm -hmm. So uh, we treat it one side with the IV mm -hmm. and then the injection in the right knee. Right. And then three weeks later, we did the same thing. That night, for the first time in my, since 98, mm -hmm. I slept like a little baby pain-free. Wow. First night. Hey, the first night, you have to understand, I my neck used to hurt because the shoulder was putting pain up my neck. Right. I couldn't lay on my back. Mm -hmm. It was sending that pain down, you know. There wasn't any pain anywhere. Wow. You know, and in the morning, I'm running around on my leg. Mm -hmm. You know, one knee was good enough to carry the weight of the other. Mm -hmm. And I have stairs, two-story house mm -hmm. that... We were thinking about getting a chair left. Wow. Oh, and the the other thing, I had to get 2,000 signatures. So I couldn't get signatures or knock on doors if I couldn't walk. So you need these for the campaign, basically. For the campaign. But, and, but you can't move. I can't move. <laughs> wow. I couldn't walk. I mean, we were looking at a disaster yeah. where my knees that night decided to give out. Wow. I mean... I, you know, the end of being able to run or whatever. So I was able to knock on three weeks later, I started knocking on doors mm -hmm. and I knocked on close to 13,000 doors. 13,000? 13, 13,000 doors myself. Wow. Because I wanted to be able to talk to people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what their health was like. Mm -hmm. I want to know if they were taking medications. Mm -hmm. I wanted to let them know that there was something else out there, mm -hmm. that I was going to go to office and I was going to go against my party, mm -hmm. who was a Republican. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer, I'm now an independent. Mm -hmm. Because there's too much polarization and antics going on mm -hmm. uh, because I think politicians are being brought out by major pharmaceuticals and entities that are making money and they're not really thinking about getting rid of these problems. And that is, and it's an interesting dynamic when you look at this whole pain scenario. And I, I've investigated this in other docuseries that we've done. Uh, there is no doubt that I've seen uh, pharmaceutical companies who are funding the campaigns of, of state level and, and national level uh, politicians uh, you know, to do their bidding for them. And sure. obviously it's a good investment. I, I think I saw a stat once that said there's more pharmaceutical lobbyists in Washington, D.C. than there are Congress people. So, yes. So it's, you know, there's there's a lot of influence peddling going on there. And and you're right, they've got a vested interest in getting people on these drugs and keeping them on these drugs sure. as compared to something as simple and natural as, as the cell therapy. And, I'm, 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 you know, I, I came in sort of like, I've heard some stories you know, somewhat skeptically, but as I'm talking to more and more people like yourself saying, uh, you know, I was facing some really very troubling options and uh, and it was something that could have really destroyed my life. 
Right. And uh, and I I got this done. And you know, but you're saying you know, but the first night you were noticing results from this. It's it's startling. It really is. Yeah. And certainly, uh, probably not if if you're a, a a pharmaceutical company and you're invested in you know pain medication this is probably not something you want to see become very popular very quickly right and you can understand i did not win the primary i was running against a doctor oh yeah <laughs> yeah and you would think that you know doctor he really cares about people and mm. he really care he did not say one peep about what i was saying and mm -hmm. he said oh well i'm going to be working against opioids. Mm -hmm. Why are you not on board then with eliminating mm -hmm. the use of opioids by curing people yeah. and curing them pain-free? You have to understand, I have not used an aspirin mm -hmm. or a painkiller of any sort since, what was it, five days or a week before that treatment because they did not want any yeah. of that in my bloodstream mm -hmm. prior to that. The only thing I take is vitamins. Mm -hmm. it, I've become so um, drug-free when it comes to taking any type of drug whatsoever. Mm. My husband's like, don't you want to take that cough medicine? Mm -hmm. I had the flu mm -hmm. over the holidays. I said, you know what, I'm using what my grandmother told me to do. Yeah. You know, I've got tea and honey. Yeah. I'm trying to make America aware mm -hmm. that this country started off as we the people. Mm -hmm. And when we the people start becoming enlightened mm -hmm. and we vote and we back the things that are right for us mm -hmm. and what we want, guess what? We start taking control back. Mm -hmm. We don't need terms. We don't need, it starts with we the people. Mm -hmm. We the people, mm -hmm. not them, mm -hmm. not Congress, mm -hmm. not the pharmaceuticals. We start taking back the power. For sure. Well, uh, certainly a lot to consider. And uh, it's uh, your own personal experience is, uh, is quite, uh, you know, uh, radical, really, as far as you know, what you were able to experience personally. And uh, I'm glad you have a, a desire to, uh, to let other people know about it and try to get things right here. Right. It wasn't about winning. Mm -hmm. It was about doing the right thing. Yeah. And about trying to solve a problem. And so, hence, I'm still in the battle. I'm still <laughs> out there trying to solve yeah. that and trying to tell people, hey, there's an alternative. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for, uh, for sharing that and uh, helping us let people know about that too. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.